die of apoplexy quite suddenly, don't they? Yes, uh, but it's heredity. My dear fellow, it's a sort of thing that runs in families. You had much better say a sir chill. You are sure a severe chill isn't hereditary or anything of that kind? Of course it isn't. Very well then. My poor brother Ernest is carried off suddenly in Paris by a severe chill that gets rid of him. But I thought you said that uh, Miss Cardo uh, was a little too much interested in poor brother Ernest. Wouldn't you feel his loss a good, a good deal? Oh, that is all right. Cecily is not a silly, romantic girl, I'm glad to say. She has got a capital appetite, goes long walks, and pays no attention at all to her lessons. I would like rather to see Cecily. Can you make it a uh, Zoom? James? I, yeah, is that good enough? Yeah, thank you. I will take very good care. You never do. She's excessively pretty and she is only just 18. Have you told Gwendolyn yet that you have an excessively pretty word who is only just 18? Oh, one doesn't blurt these things out to people. Cecily and Gwendolyn are perfectly certain to be extremely great friends. I'll bet you anything you like that half an hour after they have met, they'll be calling each other sister. Women only do what when they have called each other a lot of other things first. Now, my dear boy, if we want to get a good table at a Willis, uh, we really must go to dress. You know, it is nearly seven. Oh, it is. It always is nearly seven. Well, I'm hungry. I never knew you were. You, I never knew when you weren't. Uh, what shall we do after dinner? Go to the theater. Oh no! I lot listening. Well, uh, let us go to the club. Oh no, I hate talking. Well, we might uh, we might try to run to the Empire at 10. Oh no, I can't bear looking at things. It's so silly. Well, what shall we do? Nothing. It's, uh, it's awfully hard work doing nothing. However, I don't mind work where there is no definite object of my kind. Enter Lane. I'll play Lane. No, I'll pl I'm going to play Gwendolyn. Uh, no, let's see if other people want to play. Does anybody want to play Lane and Gwendolyn? Lane is just a short line. Okay, I will play Gwendolyn and Lane. Enter Lane, Miss Fairfax. Enter Gwendolyn. Lane goes out. Gwendolyn, uh, up on my word. Algy, kindly turn your back. I have something very particular to say to Mr. Worthing. Really? Gwendolyn, I don't think I can allow this at all. Algy, you always adopt a strictly immoral attitude toward life. You are not quite old enough to do that. Algernon, reti own... Algernon retires to the fireplace. My own darling. Ernest, we may never be married. From the expression on Mama's face, I fear we never shall. Few parents nowadays pay any regard to what their children say to them. 
The old fashioned respect for the young is fast dying out. Whatever influence I ever had over Mama, I lost at the age of three. But although she may prevent us from becoming man and wife, and I may marry someone else and marry often, nothing that she can possibly do can alter my eternal devotion to you. Dear Gwendolyn. The story of your romantic origin as related to me by Mama with unpleasing comments has naturally stirred the deeper fibers of my nature. Your Christian name has an irresistible fascination. The simplicity of your character makes you exquisitely incomprehensible to me. Your town address at the Albany I have. What is your address in the country? The Manor House, Wilton, Hertfordshire. Algernon, who has been carefully listening, smiles to himself and writes the address on his shirt cuff, then picks up the railway guide. There is a good postal service, I suppose. It may be necessary to do something desperate. That, of course, will require serious consideration. I will communicate with you daily. My own one. How long do you remain in town? Till Monday. Good. Algy, you may turn around now. Thanks. I've turned around already. You may also ring the bell. You let me see you to your carriers, my own darling. Certainly. Lane enters. I'll see Miss Fairfax Fax out. Yes, sir. Jack and Gwendolyn go off. Lane prevents several letters on presents several letters on a salver tray to Algernon. It is to be surmised that they are bills, as Algernon, after looking at the envelopes, tears them up. Algernon. A glass of sherry, Lane. Yes, sir. Tomorrow, Lane, I'm going to Bunbury. Yes, sir. I shall probably not be back till Monday. You can put my dress clothes, uh, my smoking jacket, and all uh, the Bunbury suits. Yes, sir. I hope tomorrow will be a fine day, Lane. It never is, sir. Lane, you're a perfect pessimist. I do my best to give satisfaction, sir. Enter there's Jack. A, Lane goes off. There's a sensible, intellectual girl. The only girl I ever cared for in my life. What on earth are you so amused at? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm a little anxious about poor Bunbury. That's all. If you don't care, your poor friend Bunbury will get you into a serious scrap someday. I love scraps. They are the only things that are never serious. Oh, that's nonsense, Elsie. You never talk anything but nonsense. And nobody ever does. Jack looks indignantly at him and leaves the room. Algernon lights the cigarette and his shirt cuff and smiles. Okay. <clears throat> so that is curtain for act one. Mm -hmm. So let's take a pause. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Maruf. <coughs> Colis. Amans. <coughs> and everybody else. 
Hello. Colas, have we met? I don't remember. Yeah, long time no see, maybe one month. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you, James. We are reading a play by Oscar Wilde called The Importance of Being Earnest. If you want to read along, you can download the play online. It's free. It's a old play, so there's no copyright. Anybody have any questions, comments, or requests? Questions, comments, or requests? No, you're all just eager to hear Siamak and Munmi continue reading. Hi, Rania. Hello, hi, 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 Azita. Hi, James. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you all. Okay, let's continue reading then. No, nothing anyone wants to say. If you want to read a part, just let us know. We can switch it up. We don't have to only listen to Siamak and Moonmi. The next act, act two, starts with Miss Prism and Cecily. So if anybody would like to read, would anybody like to read for Miss Prism or Cecily? or stage directions. Going once, going twice. I would like to play the Sicily, Mr. Sicily. Okay, we've got a Cecily. How about Miss Prism? I I will read for Miss Prism in that case. Reading Off. skill is not good. What, what? I said my reading skill is not good. Okay. No pressure. Off we go. Act two. Scene. Garden at the manor house. A flight of gray stone steps leads up to the house. The garden, an old fashioned one, full of roses. Time of year, July. Basket chairs and a table covered with books are set it under a large yew tree. Miss Prism discovered seated at the table. If you're not talking, please mute Miss Afroza. Cecily is at the back watering flowers. Among the mons, you're reading. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 no, no, my 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 fault. I'm I'm reading from Miss Prism. I'm sorry. All right, let's begin. Cecily, Cecily, surely such a utilitarian occupation as the watering of flowers is rather Moulton's duty than yours especially at a moment when intellectual pleasures await you. Your German grammar is on the table. Pray, open it at page 15. We will repeat yesterday's lesson. 
coming over very slowly. But I don't like German. It isn't at all uh, becoming a language. I know perfectly well that I look quite plain after my German lesson. Child, you know well, how an child, you know how anxious your guardian is that you should improve yourself in every way. He laid particular stress on your German as he was leaving for town yesterday. Indeed, he always lays stress on your German when he is leaving town. Dear Uncle Jack is so very serious. Sometimes he is so serious that I think he cannot be quiet well. Your guardian enjoys the best of health and his gravity of demeanor is especially to be commended in one so comparatively young as he is. I know no one who has a higher sense of duty and responsibility. I suppose that is why he often looks a little bored when we were three, uh, three are together. Cecily, I'm surprised at you. Mr. Worthing has many troubles in his life. Idle merriment and triviality would be out of place in his conversation. You must remember his constant anxiety about that unfortunate young man, his brother. I wish Uncle Jack would allow that unfortunate young man, his brother, to come down here sometimes. You might have a good influence over him. I am sure you certainly would. You know German and geology and things of that kind influence a man very much. She begins to write in her diary. Oh. Uh, no, made a mistake. That was your line, Cecily, now Miss Prism. I do not think that even I could produce any effect on a character that according to his own brother's admission is irretrievably weak and vacillating. Indeed, I am not sure that I would desire to reclaim him. I'm not in favor of this modern mania for turning bad people into good people at a moment's notice. As a man sows, so let him reap. You must put away your diary, Cecily. I really don't see why you should keep a diary at all. I keep a diary in order to enter the wonderful secrets of my life. If I didn't write them down, I should probably forget all about them. Memory, my dear Cecily, is the diary that we all carry about with us. Yes, but it usually con chronicles the things that have never happened and couldn't possibly have happened. I believe that memory is responsible for nearly all three volume novels that Moody sends us. Do not speak slightingly of the three volume novels, Cecily. I wrote one myself in earlier days. Did you really miss Prism? How wonderfully clever you are. I hope it did not end happily. I don't like novels that end happily. They depress me so much. The good ended happily and the bad unhappily. That is what fiction means. I suppose so, but it seems very unfair. And was your, mo was your novel ever published? Alas, no. The manuscript, unfortunately, was abandoned. I use the word in the sense of lost or mislaid. To your work, child, these speculations are profitless. Hmm. But I see, dear Dr. Chasuble, coming up through the garden. Dr. Chasuble, this is indeed a pleasure. Who would like to play Dr. Um, Ken Chasuble, Munmi? Yeah. And how are we this morning, Miss Prism? You are, I trust, well. Miss Prism has just been complaining of a slight headache. 
I think it would do her so much good to have a short stroll with you in the park, Dr. Chasubel. Yeah, yeah. Cecily, I have not mentioned anything about a headache. Uh, no, uh, dear Miss Prism, I know that, but I felt instinctively, instinctively that you had a headache. Indeed, I was thinking about that and not about my German lesson when the rector came in. I hope, Cecily, you are not inattentive. Oh, I am afraid I am. That is strange. Were I fortunate enough to be Miss Prism's people, I would hang up on her lips. I spoke metaphorically. My metaphor was drawn from bees. Uh -huh. Mr. Warding, I suppose, has not returned from town yet. We do not expect him till Monday afternoon. Ah, yes. He usually likes to spend his Sunday in London. He is not one of those whose sole aim is enjoyment, as by all accounts, that unfortunate young man, his brother, seems to be. But I must not disturb Egeria and her people any longer. Egeria? My name is Leticia, doctor. A classical allusion merely, drawn from the pagan authors. I shall see you both, no doubt, at even so. I think, dear doctor, I will have a stroll with you. I find I have a headache after all, and a walk might do it good. With pleasure, Miss Prism, with pleasure. Yeah. We might go as far as the school sent back. That would be delightful. Cecily, you will read your political economy in my absence. The chapter on the fall of the rupee you may omit. It is somewhat too sensational. Even these metallic problems have their melodramatic side. Goes down the garden path with Dr. Chaucible. Picks up a book. Horrid political economy, horrid geo geography, horrid, horrid German. Enter Merriman with a card on a plate. Um, would anybody like to read for Merriman? Uh, Abdiaziz, you keep raising your hand. Does that mean you want to read? Yeah, yeah, Mr. James. Yeah, I'm okay. going to read. Better to just say so, don't uh, then raise your hand. Go ahead. You can read for Merriman. Where? Where can I say? Where is that? Which uh, land? Now, do you see the do you see the shared screen? Do you see the play? Anything? Yeah, yeah, I see. But which line I will start? Well, it starts with Merriman. M E R R I M A N. It says, "My Ernest Worthing has just driven over from the station." Let, let me start. Master Aaron Worthing has just driven over from the station. He was brought in his luggage with him. All, all, all up to there. Okay. Your, that's, that's your part. Just for Merriman. When Merriman speaks, you'll read. Now it's Cecily's turn. Amon is playing Cecily. So you'll take turns between Merriman and Cecily. Go ahead, Amon's. All right. Take the car and read it. Mr. Ernest Worthing before the Albany. W. 
W, Uncle Jack's brother. Did you tell him Mr. Worthing was in town? <laughs> now that's Merriman again, Abdiaziz. Your turn. Yes, Mrs. Mrs. He schemed. He seemed very much disappointed. I mentioned that you and the Mrs. Sure. Frames were in the garden. He said he was anxious to speak to speak to you bravely of a moment. Ask Mr. Ernest Worthing to come here. I suppose you had better talk to the housekeeper about the uh, room for him. Abdiaziz. Abdiaziz, so, yeah, if you have some disruption in your environment, uh, please mute, but also, if you're reading, you'll need to let us know if you can continue or not. I see you muted yourself. Are you going to continue reading? Sorry, sorry. I apologize. I'm apologizing that. Oh, it's okay. It's my time. Yeah. Yes, Mrs. He goes off. Now, you want to read that as two different sentences. Like, you don't want to read it as one sentence. Yes, Miss, he goes off. Because one is something the character says. And then the second sentence in parentheses is a stage direction. So ideally, somebody else is going to read that. Don't read that for yourself. I'll read that. So he goes off. I have never met any really wicked person before. I feel rather frightened. I am so afraid he will look just like everyone else. Enter Algernon, very gay and debonair. He does. Algernon raising his hat. You are my little cousin, Cecily, I am sure. You are under some strange mistake. I am, I am not. Not little. In fact, I believe I am more than usually tall for my age. Algernon is rather taken aback. But I am your cousin. Hey, who's Sicily? Yeah, Sicily. You, you. I see from your card, Uncle Jack's brother, my cousin Ernest, my wicked cousin Ernest. Oh, I'm not really wicked at all. Consensus to look. You mustn't think that I'm wicked. If you are not, then you have certainly been deceiving us all in very inexcusable manner. I hope you have not been leading a double life, pretending to be wicked and being really good all the time. That would be hip hypocrisy. Algernon looks at her in amazement. Oh, of course. I have been rather reckless. I'm glad to hear it. In fact, uh, now you mentioned the subject, I have been very bad in my own small way. I don't think you should be proud of that, though I am sure it must have been very pleasant. It is much pleasanter being here with you. I can't understand how you are here at all. Uncle Jack won't be back till Monday afternoon. That's a great disappointment. I am obliged to go up by the first train on Monday morning. I have a business appointment that I'm anxious to miss. You missed it anywhere but in London? No, the appointment is in London. Well, I know, of course, how important it is not to, not to keep a business engagement if one wants to retain. any sense of, uh, of the beauty of life, 
But still, I think you had better wait till Uncle Jack arrives. I know he wants to talk to you about your immigrating. About, about my what? Your immigrating. He has gone up to buy your outfit. I certainly wouldn't let Jack buy uh, but my outfit. He has no taste in neckties at all. Don't think you will require neckties. Uncle is sending you to Australia. Australia? I'd sooner die. I'm going to pause you there. I'm going to pause this bit there. Stop my sharing. Okay. All right. Let's take a break for again. Questions, comments, or requests? Uh, I want to ask uh, you, Mr. Why the, the scene called uh, gay and the, the word gay there? Yeah, because the word gay used to mean um, happy and more like uh, presenting as being happy or happy go lucky. Debonair. He said gay and debonair. It's kind of the um, the look of a gentleman who's in a good mood and who's well dressed. In today's English, can we use that way too? Gay and debonair. It's the the meaning. The meaning still uh, still stands. However, it's it's difficult. It's a little bit difficult to use nowadays because gay has the the stronger meaning of homosexual. There's some static on the line. I just don't know. I just want to fix that. But in writing, I think we use in writing, we use gay. I mean, I have used. <laughs> how, how have you used it? Uh, in poetic, uh, somewhere, uh, maybe, I mean, in school only, I'm using some. Uh -huh. And as a, uh, you know, in answer, I don't remember exactly where, but I have used many times in poetry. Yeah, but, uh -huh. Sure. And students got confused. What's that? Then I have to again explain. It's it's generally not used anymore because of the stronger meaning of homosexual. But it can be. It's it's most often used uh, in a ironic way to mean happy. So I'm taking a pause to give us a chance to digest and connect and to see what bubbles up from the many people on the call. Look at all the many glorious people gathered together here to listen to our play and the play and, and to, uh, to talk. Some people that I have not seen before, Farah Mars, I think this might be your first time here. Is that right? Uh, yes. No, sir, this is not the first time. It is about, uh, I think, five times that I am joining in this group. Really? Okay. Yes. Well, I don't remember meeting you. Nice to meet you. Oh, uh, uh, because usually I'm not, I am not regu regularly. Yeah, that, and uh, and maybe you also don't have your camera on. Is this the first time you have your camera on? Uh, yeah. Okay, that would do it too. Go ahead, Mohammed Rashid Mahmoud. 
Uh, actually, sir, I used to be here as well, but actually due to some sort of problem, uh, I was off, but finally I'm back here and I really enjoy a lot of your lectures. So nice to see you here once again, sir. Nice Thank to you. see you. Welcome back. Laser, sir. Thank you. Who's on the iPhone? Who is iPhone? Could you tell us? Okay. Mystery. The schedule for today. The schedule for today is I'm teaching, then there is a break. Then there is the teacher coordination subcommittee meeting chaired by Ahmed. And then teacher, a treasury subcommittee meeting chaired by Nelly, who is waiting for a confirmation by the head teacher. She's going to wait a very long time. I have a prediction that Ahmed will not come today. Uh, uh, I have the same prediction. So we can we can join together in our fantasy. Or we can figure out how we feel towards Ahmed. How do you feel towards Ahmed? Because the difference between a feeling and a prediction is, is a prediction is part of what I call a fantasy. We don't actually know if he will come or not. And when we take ourselves out of the prediction, out of the fantasy, the only place to go, well, not the only place to go, but the place that we can come to as an alternative is the reality, which is the feelings. Feelings are real in the present. So would you like to say, how do you feel towards Ahmed? Yes. Uh, my feeling is irritation. And, uh, and also I think I'm tired. Okay. Irritated and tired. And that would take us into a negative prediction. So the, the alternative, again, is to just be irritated, just be tired, and then to be at the edge of the unknown. We face the, e we face the unknown. We just don't know. And we naturally, we want to know. We want to know. Is he going to come? Is he not going to come? What's going to happen? We want to know, but there's no way you there's no way to force it. We just don't know. Yes. Now, um, speaking of, I, I don't know why that reminds me of this, but um, it rem I am reminded that I would very much like to do some more role plays. So. I would like to transition away from the play of Oscar Wilde into some plays of our own, some role playing. H how does that sound? Is that okay? Would, yeah. would you like to do some role plays with me? Yes. Yes, Aso yes. says yes. Moonmi says yes. Siamak is nodding yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Great. So with a role play, like uh, I like to do 
set up just some basic structure. Who's in the role play? Who are the characters? Where are they? And what is happening? Would anybody like to make a proposal for a, a role play scene that we act out? Yesterday, we were doing some role plays in Nellie's class. I don't know if you watched, if you were here, or if you watched the video. And I played the character of Eric on a date with uh, Cyril. Munmi played the character of Cyril, and we went out on a date, on a dinner date. It was very exciting. Uh, we could continue doing that drama that and and see where that takes us or I, I'm open to that if nobody has any other suggestions. Does anybody have any other suggestions for scenes? I'm okay with yesterday's role. Mm -hmm. I'm okay too. I think I want to be the waiter. You'd like to play the, the waiter? I'm okay yeah. with that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Only that. That's one option. Uh, I I would uh, here's a here's an, a way to add to the scene. We could have a double date. So you know what a double date is. There could be a second couple with us at the table. Would anybody like to play? Me as okay. Siama, can I so you'd like to play? Yeah. Can you get? Can you give me a character name for each of you? Siama, do you have a character name? Uh, yeah, Red. Red. Yeah. Okay. Aso. Mary. Okay. Red and. Mary, is everyone ready? Yes. yes. Uh, before I'm going to start it, um, I don't know what uh, your names as an actor and an actress, Mooney and James, yeah. I don't know your my, names. My character name is Eric. Okay. And Moonmi's character name is Cyril. Okay. And if there's anything else you don't know, you, we make it up as we, we play. Because there's lots of things we don't know. The whole story is the unknown. We are, this is right, I, t I was talking about negative prediction as a fantasy. Well, this is a way to have a fantasy where it's playful. We can have fantasies and be playful and we can create all kinds of things that are not real and, and enter into the unknown and make things up. So if there's other things you don't know, just make it up. Yeah, I are, just don't know what happened yesterday. Through, you don't need to. You don't need to know what happened in the story yesterday. Each story is new. We're making okay. a new story. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Action. So oh my God. <laughs> we all are playing together. Cut, cut, cut. So we have a synchronizing problem. You see, you see everybody, even if I take a really long time with long pauses, people like to jump in suddenly and unexpectedly <laughs> to ask a question. Yes, Munmi, what is your question? Uh, no, we all are together in the play now? Yes, okay. that's what we're doing. It's a double date. Four yes. people are at dinner in a restaurant on a date. It is the Valentine's Day. <laughs> uh, Seems it's, like. It's Valentine's Day. Great. Anything else before we start? No. Okay. Three, 
two, one, action. Happy Valentine's Day, Harry. I love Happy you. Valentine's Day, everyone. Happy Ma Valentine's Day, Mary. Happy Valentine's Day, dear. Okay. It's a great, great pleasure to be here, Mary, you know, uh, in my whole life. Me too. I feel so happy to find you all here in this occasion. Mm, great. Uh, you know, uh, should, we, should we drink something? Should we have? Yeah, I usually order a bottle of Cabernet red wine. I we can uh, we can get some drinks before we start. Is red wine good for everybody? Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, I want a glass of champagne. You want champagne? Yeah. Should we all drink champagne? Let's all drink champagne. Let's get a bottle of champagne. Yeah. Should I call the window? Yeah, go ahead. It's it is very busy tonight. There's so many people yeah. out here on dates, it seems. Yeah. I can see a waiter here. Waiter, please. He's busy. W waiter, um, waiter. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you, do you work here? I I don't think he can hear us. Yeah, waiter. Yeah, it's because waiter. of the whole noise here around. Excuse, he can't excuse hear. me. Excuse me. Waiter, we want something, please. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, sir. I was uh, taking other people order. Order. There are a lot of people in in in, in this uh, restaurant. So what 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 do you want to order? Uh, we want to get a bottle of champagne. Okay, a bottle of champagne. You sharing with 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 all of your friend here? Yes, yes. one bottle for the table. One bottle for one table. And anything other than that? Any, anything else? Shall we get some hors d'oeuvres? Uh, hors d'oeuvres, okay. Hors d'oeuvres. Anything? Fine for me. That's good enough. Thank you. Okay, that's good. it will be right away. <clears throat> He seemed a little bit rude. Yeah. Or maybe he did. Hey, I heard that. I'm not rude, okay? Oh, uh, I, I wasn't talking about you. Sorry. Oh, oh then I miss her. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get back uh, standing the order at the kitchen. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we'll keep talking. <laughs> Oh my God, that's the rudest waiter I've ever seen. Maybe he wants to be free because it's Valentine and yeah. uh, he's walking. And in the restaurant, he's uh, putting on a, a sunglasses, a pair of sunglasses. Strange. Anyway. When I was walking to the restaurant, um, something strange happened. A man uh, tried to sell me Valentine's Day uh, chocolates, a box of chocolates. And uh, I kept telling him no, but he wouldn't leave me alone. And he followed me for three blocks. No way. But why didn't you buy, Eric? You don't like giving me chocolates? You want me to buy you chocolate from strange men on the street who... Oh. Okay, that's a good decision then. 
no, no, no. no. I'll go out. I'll go out and find him right now, if you like. I'll go and buy uh, your no, chocolate. I, I would hate for you to feel uh, slighted. That's fine. No issues. But what are Mary, you going to give me, Mary, darling? Um, you like chocolate too? Hi, Mary. Yes, I'm here. Uh, well, I can't figure out what are you saying. Can you repeat that? Because it is so much noise here around the music, sound of the music, and those people who keep dancing. And I can't hear you. Can you just, honey, repeating that? Mary said that you like ice cream, chocolate. Sorry. Yeah, I buy, I would love that too. Eric, you last. Did you like order some chocolate or no? Right now, champagne is okay. Yeah, I would like that. If okay. you would share the same. Okay. Can you see Eric? Right. Can you see Eric? How red is uh, caring for Mary? I'm jealous. Bye. Red, uh, Cyril seems to be creating some competition, trying to trying to get me to uh, compete with you, but it's not going to work. Hey, don't tell him, don't tell him. <laughs> See, you don't have any surprise for me. Um, oh my God, I've missed that. Well, don't say <laughs> that, maybe he is just um, hiding something special for you, but not now, maybe between I don't you and know. him. Just wait and you will see. I guess he's hiding something more special. Last year, last year he gave me a bunch of beautiful red flowers, I remember. Fris, Are red you remember what, roses. What, what did I give you last year? Do you remember? You asked me yeah, red? You told me a special yeah, red iPhone. Do you remember that? No? It was so amazing. I just keep yeah. wearing it on my hand. Oh, let me see. Wow. He gave that to you for a present last year? Yeah. I was so feeling kind of so happy and surprised that he didn't miss that special day. I I never buy presents. It's not my style. Hey, we do. I like we him, do. you know? Yeah, we feel that we way do. because she needs that. She deserves that from you. Uh, no, Mary, it's, no, 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 you don't understand. I, I like his way of expressing love. If gifts doesn't matter, but I know he's feeling for me. It's all right. I just wanted to take and I wanted to teach him actually, but it's all right. Peter? Hey, Peter? Yeah, yeah, sir, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. moment, please. Uh, I need some chocolate. You have? Yes. And uh, chocolate brownie. You know, I yeah. need some. You need some. Guys, you want brownie. some chocolate brownie? I would like to have. You have two? Yeah, okay. Any more? Any, any more? Anyone want anything else? I have chocolate and chocolate brownie. What after? All right, got it. Already write it down. So, two chocolate brownies. Yeah. Eric, Eric, would you care for some chocolate brownie? I, I would like, actually, I see here you have chocolate uh, brownie ice cream sundae with whipped cream. That's what I'd like. I'd like the, the brownie sundae with brownie. vanilla vanilla ice cream, nuts, whipped cream. Okay, okay, I got it. I got my ice cream with cream. Okay, got it. I write it down. Okay, so two brownies, three brownies, am I right? If I remember, and and last one is from you, Chuck, uh, vanilla, what was that, Sunday? Yeah, the, the chocolate fudge brownie Sunday. 
with vanilla ice cream, nuts, cherry. Eric, do not eat too much. You're going to dance tonight. Yeah. Oh. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's right. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I gotta go. Okay, I, I, I got your order. I gotta send to the kitchen. Oh, what? Uh, while you're talking, a uh, champagne is not ready yet. I don't know why. Like you said, be around here. There's a lot of people, right? And yeah, it might take long. <laughs> yeah, so I gotta go. Uh, somebody's calling me. Yeah, okay. I'll be there. Uh, yeah, I gotta go. Take order. It's okay. I think we will not have champagne tonight. I didn't know we were going dancing. I'm not a very good dancer. Uh, if we go dancing, I'll probably just stand in the corner. That's the rule set that uh, you are preparing for a week? Or maybe this uh, kind of... No, he, he was not interested, but I, I just pushed him. And um, I think he can dance with me or uh, with us, uh, four of us. It, it's, it, it doesn't require any skills, you know? It's, it's all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Marino he doesn't need to be a good dancer. Marino is that I'm the only one who can dance. Really nice. Even I can try ballet. Really? Wow. I, I, I actually want to uh, try it with you. Oh, uh, no, Marino will not. No? no? It's okay if she likes and you like, it's okay. I'm sure okay. Eric will love I'll to see me. I'll keep chatting with Eric. He can go and dance. I don't have the need for dancing. Oh, yeah, chocolate brownie. So red, here, finally. Yeah. Before champagne, we have chocolate brownie. That's a big problem. What kind of wither do we have? Cut. Cut. Debrief time. Debrief is when we talk about the role play, what it was like to be in the character, and what other people thought about the character's performance this and the story. The actor's performance and the story. So, any thoughts about this role play? Well, for me, it was great. Uh, yeah, I wish I could And yeah, yeah we, it, it was great, but the waiter was very busy. So? He, did, he didn't bring the orders. Yes, yeah, so? <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's true. He won't do it the next thing. <laughs> eh? What's that? I said he will do it and get the order so as soon as possible in the next scene. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it, but uh, I find it difficult to carry on with uh, you know, uh, poor people. The reason that it's you're finding it difficult with four people is because as actors, you're not listening to each other. You're, you're creating a synchronizing problem. You're all trying to talk at the same time. And that's going to create a problem. You, it's a, you see, it's different than a play. In a play, you know who's gonna talk next. In an improv with four people, you know somebody's going to talk next, but you don't know who. You need to be more sensitive to the cues and to other people talking. You really need to watch each other and be ready to listen so that you don't talk over each other. And you really need to listen to each other if somebody starts talking rather than trying to jump in too quickly and talk over them so then nobody hears them or you. That was, the, that was the biggest thing that I noticed. That was the biggest problem 
that I noticed in this role play was trying to talk over each other. Well, another problem was uh, uh, laughing for actions. Someone else someone was uh, laughing for their actions, whatever they were doing. Oh, really? Who, who, who was yeah. laughing? Uh, let me know. Let me tell you the names. You're fine. The names. Uh, I think. Which one? But an actor, somebody was laughing and you felt that it got in the way. Uh, uh, the waiter, the waiter was laughing and also uh, one another name I, I, I forgot. I, I saw Aldori. Name, but, uh, so when they were acting, oh, oh, she is. Um, uh, I don't know. Her, uh, right. Mommy. Moon me. Uh, so, Moon me, excuse yes, me. Yes, I was Mon laughing me, with my son, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. So, when yeah. you were acting and uh, so you were laughing for your action. Yeah. Uh, that certainly can be a problem. I didn't notice yeah. it too much, but that certainly can be a problem. Um, yeah. Yes, and I was distracted by my son also. Yeah. Yeah, her son, because... Any other thoughts about this no. role play? Uh, well, for me, uh, well, 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 four of you were dating at, uh, at the restaurant there, like you had said, uh, it was busy, right? And yeah, then the waiter uh, came at, at you all and uh, take your orders. And it brings the orders to the kitchen, and it takes longer uh, time to get the the order that you ordered the champagne, right? And because of that, that's why um, you know sometimes I came in late and just to you know. Uh, well, that's what ha Amans. That's that's what happened in the story, and that was fine. That worked with the story. So you don't have to explain the story. The story is kind of self-explanatory. I like the character of Eric, like uh, not giving gifts and all, not a typical lover. And uh, then also see I'm, uh, I mean, Red's uh, fear for, you know, if he will dance with, uh, Cyril, then Mary can, you know, Mary might feel bad or something. So he was uh, conscious. So that is good also I like. I, I, I want to I wanna point something out. I don't know if it, you'll know if this will make sense. But when, when, when people are talking in an improv, there is a focus. There is a focus even if there's multiple characters, there's only one focus. If the if the if you split the focus, then the audience will split their attention, and that that doesn't work. So the focus is going to be the main thing that's happening. For example, if the if the waiter is talking, that's the focus. Now, there was no focus. The the, the kind of the tension was dropping. And so I brought in a story. I brought in a, a piece of information. I said, my character said, <clears throat> he told a little story in, inside the story. He said he was um, coming to the restaurant and somebody tried to sell him chocolates. And Your response to that, Moonmi, your character's response was, was, oh, you should have bought me chocolate. And my feeling is that there somehow, I don't know, we got stuck. We didn't find a way to take it and make it uh, a, part, a, a clear part of the conversation. That is what I would like to work on, our ability to do that, to just have a clear exchange about ideas and that takes a little bit of like um you know 
creativity for each of us to say something to move the story along. That's what I want to practice, how to move the story along rather than to just get stuck. Yes, we're on a, we're on a date. Yes, we're at the restaurant. Yes, we ordered some food. But what's the story? Is the story that there's a boring waiter? Is the story that um, we have people who are jealous and trying to compete with each other? Right. We didn't really clearly get the story going. And that's okay. We're learning how to do that. It, but it requires somebody to offer some idea and then the other actors pick it up and work with that. And that takes a little bit of skill to realize, uh, to have the idea and then to put it into action and for then for all the other actors to play along, to understand that's the idea and to play along. It takes a little bit of skill not to change the topic in a way, like we do in open conversation. Same thing in the role play. If you change the topic, it will kind of take the energy out of one thing and slow us down. So we, we work on that. Shall we try another one? Yeah. Yes. Do you have any ideas for? Please, please, Mr. Jones. I have a yeah. thought about uh, yeah, the previous uh, uh, play. Yeah. Uh, I see serial, actually, I, I can see serial uh, character in all uh, the series and films. Uh, I can see the, uh, <laughs> money. don't take it personally, okay? We talk about the character. I can see the character of a woman who uh, tries to have everything she tries to have uh, the love, the presence, yeah. the happy yeah. time, and the, the uh, to to have to uh, take. Uh, she she tries to take the attention of the other man on the table, and uh, on the other side, I can say I can see uh, uh, a lady who is uh, she is married, she is patient, she is jealous, but she tries to uh, hide her uh, emotions of uh, jealousy. And she, she said it's okay to have uh, uh, the dancing with the cereal. So I can see actually all uh, these characters in the, uh, in, um, in the series and films, in each, in all the series and films nowadays. And you're in reality too. Yeah, you're saying that this is a common character. Yes. Yes. And so what we want to do is we want to explore the character through the play. Yes. Now, can you think, if, if you'd like, to take this character and put them in a new situation and see what happens? That's how we can explore. So can you think, where, where can we put this character that will give us the next insight, a window into this character? Who is this character going to talk to next? Are they going to talk? They're going to be talking with Eric in private. Are they, are they going to be talking to their mother? Are they going to be talking to their friends? What's, what's going to happen in the life of this character next that gives us deeper insight to who they are and what their uh, story is? You know, in story writing, there's three main um, <clears throat> conflicts that every protagonist, every character has. Either they are in conflict with another person, or they are in conflict with nature, the world, or they are in conflict with themselves. So who, who is Cyril in conflict with? Is she in conflict with... Her, her boyfriend who doesn't give her what she wants? Or is she in conflict with herself, creating problems for herself when she dates? What is the story of this character? She seems that she is in conflict with her boyfriend. Okay, 
So you'd like to see maybe more scenes where she gets to explore the car- the conflict with her boyfriend? Yeah. What kind of scenes? Well, when she asked about the chocolate and he seems that, he says that I, how could I get you the chocolate from someone who, from a strange man who's walking in the street? Okay. Then she the, the idea. Yeah, so, so, the, so you, you see the chocolate, the fact that he didn't buy chocolate for her as being her, her issue. And you want them to talk about it. Where are they going to talk about this? At, at the same restaurant? Oh, at the same restaurant. Okay. A different day or same day? Maybe a different day, but at night. Okay. Yeah. People usually go to restaurants at night. So the same restaurant. And it's just the two of them. And I'm still the waiter. And you still want to be the waiter. Okay. Let's give it a try. Shall we? Yeah. So would we return back to the same uh, restaurant? Well, I, I think the idea is that it's just Eric and Cyril this time. Okay, so it's supposed to be in another place, right? Well, so now you have two different ideas. So we need to make a decision. How do we make a decision between two things? I see that they uh, that after um, the party and going out at the restaurant at that night, then the second day, the ne- or the day, the next day, then um, Cyril will talk to Eric and tell him about everything and the events. And what happens. Where? Where? Where are, are their home? Or are, mm-hmm. at Cyril's home? At Cyril's home. Okay. Yeah. Sound good? I'm not hearing any objections, so I'm okay with that. Are you okay with that, Munmi? Yeah. Okay, let's try it out. We're at Cyril's home. It's the day after Valentine's Day. And Cyril is still upset about the chocolates. Ready, three, two, one, action. Hi, Eric, come in. Have a seat. Hi. 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 Ah, I'm happy to see you, that you came to meet me here. I love seeing you. I know. You know what? Just sometimes I feel just seeing is not enough. You think that just seeing each other is not enough. I was yeah. thinking I was thinking the same thing. That's why you invited me to your apartment, isn't it? Yeah. We have been together for three years. Okay, how was how did you how did you feel about last night? Oh my god, I hated it. I can't stand those two. You mean red? They're so there's the yeah. They're so um I don't know what the word is, uh lovey dovey. Yeah. 
makes me sick to see it. Yeah. And uh, I'm sorry, I uh, asked you for the chocolates, actually not just for you, but just to show Mary. Really? Yes. Because you, you, you just, I, I, I don't understand. You, you, you what? You, you were trying to show, show Mary something? Yeah, because uh, you were silent there and uh, Red uh, has been expressing his love for Mary and, uh, and I just couldn't say Mary. Mary looks, her, her sight was something like, oh, see my boyfriend, he's so caring for me. He's giving me gifts and all. So she, she gave, gave that attitude and I couldn't stand that uh, her expression, her reaction. And just to show her, I just, uh, you know, uh, wanted chocolates from you. Well, huh. It's, it's funny you should say that because I brought you chocolates today. Really? Yeah. Wow. Where it is? Where are you hiding? Here. Oh, thank you so much. I bought them from that same guy. He was chasing me again. Is it? Yeah. But I wonder why he is chasing you. Yesterday, well, last night also. Yeah. Have Probably you seen just... him before? I think he's just trying to, uh, you know, he's just a street vendor. One of those I people. think is that a black guy? No, he's Chinese. One man used to stand in front of my university. And he used to follow me. And he continued to follow me for 15 days, two weeks. What? Yes. I'm so scared of telling him. Because you... The, you know, I don't understand. How can somebody follow you for 15 days? Yes. Where, where does he follow you? What, what, what does that even mean? After the first day, you wouldn't you call the police? What are you talking about? Followed you for fifteen days. You, it sounds like a uh, you've been traveling yes. through the desert. Uh, yes. When I go back from university, uh, when I come home, I have been observing him, but I I couldn't say anything. I, I know that he is uh, following me, but he never said anything to me. So how can I go or, or inform police? But I know that the person is following me. Till my home. And uh, then he, he again goes back. What if so I, I told was... you, what if I told you actually that that was me in disguise? Really? Yeah. That was me following you for 15 days. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to, uh, I, I saw you and um, I liked your hairstyle. And I thought, uh, how, how can I meet her? So uh, instead of just talking to you, I... I put on a disguise and I uh, followed you around. Okay. But you could have come home. You, we know we talk to each other. Then I don't know why you just, uh, you know, came and followed me in disguise. 
Well, to get to gather information about you, so that I could uh, then meet you other in a out of out of my disguise. Or are you? Have you been spying on me? <laughs> cut! 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 Well, <laughs> story writing is, is not an easy thing to do, to do it uh, spontaneously and to make everything make sense. What do, what do people think? What are people's thoughts of that scene? It was really amazing and enjoyable what, at, what? at the same time. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it is so amazing. You... Both of you do it perfectly as if there were a, a text and you memorize it and it works so perfect for both of you because it depends uh, only on your imagination at the same time and what each of you is thinking to say at the specific moment you are going to say it uh, as your turn. Well, it's true. We need to make it up on the on, on the fly. It's true. Yeah, the, the, there's just like was a harmony, a match. Yeah. Do, uh, so, uh, yeah. so do you do you want to be able to do that? Do you want to be able to make things up and figure out what to say appropriately uh, in the moment? Do you mean um, I can do it uh, or not? I'm asking you if that is something an ability you want to develop for yourself. No, I like the way I'm just analyzing and saying my feedback about the scene. Oh, so you're, so much you're, pushing, you. you're pushing me aside and you want me to do it, but you don't want to do it yourself? No, I love that. I love doing that. I love acting in general, actually. Great. So we could we have some time. Maybe we'll get you to do another scene. Anybody else have thoughts, other thoughts about the scene that me and Moonmi just did? Alyssa, Sorry, oh. go ahead, Alyssa. Okay, first of all, my thoughts are about Eric. Eric's a creep. <laughs> Eric's what? He's, he's been, Eric's he's a creep. A creep. He's stalking Kira for, what, 15 days just to get her to know, that, get her information. I was like, and I like that you switched it up. Like I thought that Eric would remain as not the typical romantic guy, but it turns out that you actually surprised her with chocolate. And also, um, I, I like that Cyril just plays along with it as well, especially the part about the creepy guy. And then you you also like made it a twist. Like that creepy guy was actually that was a great uh, turnaround. You like that twist. Alyssa, your microphone is not really working well. I can't hear you. It's very difficult. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, all right. Yeah, so there was a twist. There was a... Uh, Eric was a romantic guy. And then he revealed himself to be a creepy guy. And uh, it cre yeah, created some interesting I'm movement. A, a go, plot go, twist. go ahead, Amans. Yeah, it was a plot twist, you know. Suddenly, there was a plot twist. Actually, the, the guy who saw the, what, the candy, right, at night, uh, the, the, sell the chocolate. To to Moonmi's character is, is actually you, is actually Eric. Um, well, it's a uh, like a plot twist, you know. It was a surprise. And, yeah, it's uh, it's something really, uh, you know, some some surprise there. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Anybody else? While doing the play, uh, something uh, you know, though it was a play. 
uh, it was my honest uh, feeling I was saying about that, uh, like, um, I mean, I, I'm not a person uh, who wants gifts from my boyfriend. So I just brought it back. I, I wanted to be honest. And uh, and that's how I said that, uh, that I was just wanted to, I, I wanted to show off to Mary that uh, my boyfriend is also giving me gifts, but personally, I don't want. <laughs> so while playing, maybe our Moon, real Moon me, sometimes come. Moon me, so, so uh, you lost me there. Um, in real life, you don't like gifts. It's not important to you. Yeah, the and, gift is not important to me. And in real life, is it important to you that people show their affection in order to make other people jealous? No, no, that's also not true. But I had to, uh, you know, I mean, somehow I wanted to make it up that I wanted to be honest. But at the already I did that, that I, I said I, gel, I, I was jealous. And, and today if I say, no, no, I don't want to. Uh, Moon me. Yes. Moon yeah. me. So one thing that will help us to understand what you're saying is, if you don't refer to Cyril as I, right? So. Yeah, but uh, yes, Cyril in the last, I mean, last night in the Valentine night, Cyril said that uh, she wants gifts. And, uh, but, uh, you know, since I am playing and I want it because, you know, I couldn't, Accept it that I'm asking for gift. So I made Cyril say that uh, Cyril was zealous of uh, uh, Cyril actually wanted to show uh, in front of others that my boyfriend is also, you know, he also gives me, uh, gives her gift. But Moon in me. reality, she doesn't want. You're mixing together I with Cyril <laughs> again. So. Yeah. It, so I want you to, I really want you to separate those two. Okay. We are not our characters because once we become our characters and we can't play anymore. Yeah, that's true. Right. We're, we're giving ourselves the freedom to play. So, uh, so don't let yourself be influenced by your character. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't think that you're a bad person just because your character does something bad. You're not a bad person. You're not Cyril. Mm -hmm. Yes. But sometimes it is very difficult. Well, it's difficult because you are, act. it's difficult because you are thinking that playing a character in a fictional story somehow means something about you, but it doesn't. If you play the murderer in a story, you are not a murderer. Yeah. If you play, so, no buts. If you play a cheater, if you're cheating on your boyfriend in a story, if your character's cheating, you, it's not you. We really want to really wanna separate those out very clearly. Otherwise, yes. we cannot do, we mm -hmm. cannot play. And we need to really feel that character that, as if, yeah, I mean, I mean, I have to forget about myself and I have to feel like, yes, I am surreal, I am like that. Yeah, for that time period, you're mm -hmm. playing somebody else. Yeah. Shall we do another one? Yes, yes. All right, well, what's the story? So is the, is the time for starting another story or giving you feedback? Which would you like to do? Uh, exactly. Let me give you feedback uh, that sure. uh, uh, this you played very well, uh, especially on that time that Munmi uh, started uh, another, another story or uh, it changed the story. Uh, on that time that you said that someone was uh, uh, was trying to sell me some chocolate 
but you got to stuck there but mommy started another story that someone else was uh, following me that started another story that was very good skill i think that was very good time to change uh, the story and that was a very good play you you liked that that um the story changed at that moment from the person selling chocolates to the person following around Cyril. Yes, exactly. Because you two were stuck there and you, you didn't have anything to say. But Monmi changed that someone else mm -hmm. was following her. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and you, uh, you two went to another route of the story and uh, started saying mm -hmm. something else. Great. So we can practice that. Yeah, we can practice always adding the next part in the story. Yeah, very well. Very good. It's it, it's um, you've got to always bring in new information or else the story dies. The story is built with new information that we think of and, and, and bring in in our characters. So let's mm -hmm. practice doing that. Let's and, and actually we're doing that right now as we try to think of the next scene. Right. May, uh, I, I think I have an idea, Mr. Green. Okay. Uh, uh, discipline teacher holding a cane. Um, he talks, talking with uh, his student, tried to uh, Skip school, am I right? Well, yeah. well you, you said, are you right? But I, it's your idea, so there's no right or wrong. Your idea is there's a teacher skipping, yeah. and a student who is skipping school. Two, two students skipping school, one disciplined teacher. And they got caught, I think. They got caught. OK. Uh, and. That's all. After that, I don't know what. Okay. Teacher. Student teacher role play. Students are skipping school. Teacher is disciplining them. Sorry for interruption. Uh, I will come after half an hour. Bye, Munmi. Yeah, bye. Bye, everyone. Me. Me? Oh. Me also. Me also, as student. Me too, as well. I think, I think, Faramars, you were not saying me. You were saying bye, moon me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I said bye, moon me. I'm yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. Just, just clearing that up. And then, um, so, Amans, you would like to play a student? Yeah, a student. Uh, yeah. And uh, so, you would like to play a student? Yeah. Would anybody like to play the teacher? You will be the teacher, James. <laughs> you want me to be the teacher? I can be the teacher, sure. Shall we go with your character name, Dante? Your is Dante on the student? Dante. Yeah, Dante. Yeah. Mohammed Tariq, you're saying no. Would you say something rather than using the symbols if you want to actually say something? Otherwise, I'm going to ignore it because sometimes people press buttons by accident. Um, so we have two students, teacher. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, actually, I want to get clear, clear. Where is this conversation happening? In the classroom? Yeah, and in your detention. Is that right? The room called detention room? In sure. your... Sure, in detention. Detention is, detention is a place where students go when they are in trouble and they have to stay at school. So it's both a place and uh, um, how do I say it? Like a period, like lunch. Like you have lunch in the lunchroom, you have detention in detention. So uh, it's in detention and they're, have, and they're being detained at school as punishment. Great. Okay. Three, two, one, action. 
message no, no, I was trying to, uh, you know, I was trying to, you see that, that, uh, Small shop there. They, yeah, I was trying to buy only drinks there because um, the canteen um, bird guy don't want to sell drinks to me, and that's why I try to, you know, go out from school. Dante. Yeah, this is detention. No talking. Okay, Mister Mister Green. Cut. I'm not Mr. Green. See, the, the point of choosing a character name is so that we can have a different character than who we really are. My real name is Mr. Green. And if you call me Mr. Green in the role play, that locks me in to being my character. And I'm, I'm not doing that. Okay, all right. So, sorry. Your name is uh, Eric, right? You could, you could make up any other name for me. You didn't know my name. You could have made up a different name, but you can't call me my actual name. That creates uh, too much confusion. Make it Mr. Simon. Sure, Mr. Simon. Eric Simon, Mr. Simon. Okay, we're going back into the role play. Three, two, one. One action. Okay, Mr. Simon, I will. Um, yeah, I will not talk. Dante, don't talk about not talking. Just don't talk. No talking in detention. Mr. Simon, may I ask you why is he in detention room? the same reason you're in detention. You did something very bad. Well, I, I, I think you, you also want to skip school. And because I saw you try to, um, you know, jump over the, the gate. That's you. And that's why you're in here. Yeah, and I hate school, actually. Especially you know, the math teacher. I hate I, him so much. I have the detention record here. And it seems that both of you have been in detention 75 times this year. You, you wrote that? Uh, well, I were in detention 75 times. That's... Um, uh, really uh, ama amaze me. Uh, well, I have problems, uh, you know, Mr. Simon. Sometimes yes, I gotta, uh, you do have problems, Dante. You have problems following the teacher's instructions. I see here many notes that other teachers responsible for detention have written. Dante is talking. Dante won't stop talking. I've asked Dante to be quiet and he will not be quiet. It seems that you have a long history of ignoring the teachers in this school, Dante. I ignore uh, many teachers that much. How about her? She, can you tell me what, how many times she uh, got in the detention room? No, I will not tell you that. Oh, uh, well, um, I, I promise you that uh, this is, will be the last time that I'll be in your detention room. And not, you have to, yeah. I'm not counting on it. Please count on it because I, I think I want to change, change myself to be a, a better person than before. I think I didn't follow uh, the true step to becoming a good, a good, a good student in school. I, I think I, you know, I just realized I did some, so many things, so many times wrong in, in this school. So, uh, can I go out now?
Over uh, here. What? Well, actually, based on your words, it's obvious that you are not going to change at all. Um, no, you cannot go out because detention is not over. And it has nothing to do with her. This is your problem. And it looks like it's going to be your problem for a very long, 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 long time. What, may I ask another question, please, Mr. Simon? How, for how many... For how many hours we are going to stay here in detention room? You have you have been in detention quite a bit already this year. Also, I think you know what time detention ends. Well, actually, I'm I'm new. What time does it end? And because uh, I, I, you know. Um, my parents uh, you know, need me to eat lunch at home, and he's worried, probably worried at me, and you don't want them to, you know. Since you are not following my instructions, I'm, bo I'm giving you both another day of detention, so I will see you again here tomorrow. Tomorrow? So, uh, if I get you right, I'm seeing you tomorrow with her? Uh, well, okay, uh, that's that's good. So, uh, am I still can go out now, and, or I'm still stuck? Cut. So, when we cut, you need to take a moment to just come back to yourself. Really want to see it as being separate you're in your character and then you leave your character so take a moment you're not your character anymore you're not a bad little boy in school you're amans same for you <laughs> so yeah I'm okay any thoughts on this role play i just wanted to know what i did to be now, in yeah. Now, do you remember my instructions about how to create the story? You don't want to ask questions as a character. The job of the actor is to create the story, not to put the story creation on other actors. Right. So you guys, you guys got stuck in asking questions. That is going to that's going to create a barrier to, to creating the story. What time does detention end? Can I go home? It's a little bit um, repetitive and we know, you, do, you know, I mean, to a certain degree, okay, it, it makes sense. But how do we go to the next level in the story? Now, Amans, I thought it was interesting when you started to describe yourself, describe the character as wanting to change. You want to be a better person. You want to be a better student. That, that was interesting. Did people, yeah. people, would people agree? That was interesting. That was taking the character somewhere. True that. I saw that. <laughs> but then I, I, yeah, for me, but then I, I, I and I don't know what to tell anymore, you know. I don't know what to tell uh, other story. And I ran out of idea. <laughs> what could what could Amon's character have said after that to take the story, to continue the story? Maybe let's go eat some, you know, food at the canteen together. No, I don't think so. No, he mentioned something about his parents that they get worried about him and there might be a problem of staying for too long in the detention room. Well, that's May true. May I say something? One second. You see, that's true, but that also wouldn't really be aligned with the idea of the character changing. I would have wanted to know more from the character about why they want to change and what they want to change into. 
do they want to become a lawyer when they grow up? Do they want to actually learn some history in, in school? What is this, you know, what is driving the character? It's, it's similar to, to what we do when we just study English and I ask you, what do you actually want? We can think about what the character wants. Does the character... Yeah, one second, Aso. One second. Yeah, yeah. Does the character just want to get out of detention that day and is not willing to recognize anything that they're they're doing that is getting them in detention? Well, that's not wanting to change. That's going to just be the same old, same old. But if the character wants to do something new and talks about it, that is interesting. Go ahead, Ali. Yeah, uh, it was great, but uh, there was uh, uh, something that I expected from students. Uh, they, uh, as far as I uh, remember, the story was about the students that they are uh, escaping from the school, but uh, uh, they didn't talk about their excuses uh, that they had about the escaping from the school, just they were uh, talking about anything else. Uh, uh, I expected that they may bring some excuses. Maybe my mother was sick or my father was sick or another uh, excuses uh, rather than they Listen were uh, talking about, uh, uh, for example, Amon was talking about the ASO, why she is here, why, uh, what is the problem of her? Uh, why uh, I think it was uh, some some problem in this role play. May I say something about what you have just mentioned, Ali? Okay, okay. Um, what I mentioned that I hate my math teacher, and that is what makes me escape from school times. Mm -hmm. One of the excuses that I did mention. And I also, but, before um, Mr. Simon saying, or uh, let us say, James say, said, cut, I was uh, planning to say that, um, to tell Mr. Simon that we are going both to write um, an inscript or something like giving a promise by written text that we both signed together, me and um, Dante, together, that we won't do it again. We won't do such bad behavior and breaking the rules of the schools, of school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. They are, they also, the student can defend them and start describing the teacher's behavior, why uh, they, they need to punish, why they punish them like this. And um, if they hate the teacher, speak about the reason, uh, what makes them to hate the teacher. And uh, describe a little bit themselves, their feelings and situation there and teachers, their teachers. Yeah, I think it can add. Story. Yeah, see, uh, it's a mistake, I think, for the actors to try to go to the next scene. See, can I leave is like, can we end this scene? But we're the whole point is to stay in the scene. So you don't want to leave detention because that would le leave, that would and the scene, you've got to talk about wanting to leave, but you can't leave. You've got to build tension through wanting something. And just like Fatima said, you could do that in many ways. One way would be to talk about all the things, the reasons they don't like the teachers. Okay. I'm gonna end, so that's, we're done comment, we're done with our commentary about role plays and that role play and planning our role play. And I would like to go, we're gonna end, my class is gonna end in five minutes. So let's do 
surprises and learnings based on the last two hours of being together. Surprises, learnings, satisfactions, dissatisfactions, discoveries, next moves. Alyssa from the Philippines. What, what? Alyssa from the Philippines. Oh, yeah. Uh, I I'm sorry if I don't turn on my, my video because that might be the reason why my audio is not that good. So uh, satisfaction. Uh, I'm actually pleased and grateful to have uh, witnessed and listened to all the, the role plays and find, uh, exploring the characters as well, especially the storyline. Uh, there's always room for improvement and I wish there's more like this in the future. Thank you. Anyone else? Great. Other surprises, learnings. Uh, this is Khan speaking from Bangladesh. The thing I like most um, um, on me was just playing role play like uh, on a, on a uh, at a restaurant. So in that moment, um, she just escaped all the time. Uh, uh, James Green um, uh, just felt he, like why um, uh, he didn't uh, buy for candy. So in that moment, uh, Munmi, Munmi was just uh, escaped that, like, don't worry. So in that moment, uh, I realized uh, it was good actually having a relationship um, is happened. So it's a it's kind of natural flow I just got from uh, the role play. And I'm really satisfied about the topic. Thank you, anyone else? Other surprises, learnings. Satisfactions, dissatisfactions, discoveries, or next moves. A satisfaction uh, as I feel satisfied from making these strong plays. We are getting enjoyment with you, James, and at the same time, it got a real impact on our conversation, and uh, it creates a kind of imagination. And it should be a specific and correct for the position, uh, for the situation we are presenting and acting. So it makes us even thinking what we are going to say. And so it carries many benefits for me and I guess for the others as well. So we are feeling so happy with you each and every day. And that's it. Anyone else? Yeah, this is me, Max. I have learning experience uh, from Mr. Green and uh, Ms. Fatima also. You know, um, can um, uh, make story about why you hate teachers. Um, uh, as, as an actor, you can make story about um, uh, the teachers, the other actors, and say why you hate him. Um, but yeah, that's all. There's another thing to make us. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the scene be good. Yeah, that's all. And everybody else. It, it is a skill that takes some practice. And there are activities, there's, ex right? It, um, if you've never done acting before, you might not know, but there's a lot of activities, acting activities that can, that are used kind of as warm ups to, um, Develop the ability to be spontaneous, to think of things spontaneously, to have ideas as a character without a script. And we can we can use some of those activities maybe as if you'd like to develop and strengthen your ability to just think of things to say that are appropriate. I think it's 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 um it's helpful to develop that um, muscle, and it's also fun. I need to. I need to um, dust off some of my improv materials and, and remind myself about some of those activities. 
that's my class. Uh, thank you everybody for attending. And so I'm finishing that. Now, on the schedule, I believe. Okay. Was... Please, before you go and um, take it, uh, pass it over to another teacher, I just uh, want to take a permission if you don't mind. Can I show you a play I made with my uh, students uh, before uh, two or three years ago and send it to your uh, messenger or you don't accept that? Sure, send it to me. Or you could send it into to Discord. Can you put it in how, Discord? How how can I put it in Discord? I well, I don't know. Let's figure it out. Write write in Discord what kind of file it is and what is stopping you, and then we'll find a way to bring it into the group. Okay. Okay. Right, thank you. Great. Yeah. So on the schedule, I believe uh, we we have a meeting, a board of directors meeting scheduled. It's the teacher coordination subcommittee. And I believe that Ahmed um, had agreed to chair it, but um, either that's incorrect or he changed his mind and uh, Ahmed is not here. I'd like to chair the meeting for Ahmed. Substitute chair. Okay. Over to you. Okay. I'd like to take to name which members of the teacher coordination team are here. That's uh, Fatima, James, and I. And I think Munmi said she's returning later. Maybe she, she will come as well. And yeah, do we have anything um, for the agenda? Thank you, Nelly. I just learned from you how to count the classes by filter, doing filter. And I'm going to share at the end of the month the number of classes. Is it okay? Or um, it, I started right, as you said, uh, but it takes time to filter each of the teacher one by one and then I think it's better to do it one time at the end of the month instead of doing it every every week. And that's it. I don't have any new agenda item. Thank you. I'll put that on Discord, the, on the agenda. Uh, excuse me all, I have to leave the class. So goodbye for now. Goodbye, Farmer. It's nice to have you here. Goodbye. And and just to say it one 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 more time, this is not a class. We we have classes and sometimes we have meetings, right? Because the board of directors is a group of people that um, organizes what we do to hold classes oh, yeah. and I, you can leave it's okay for us i'm saying for everybody just in case anybody okay. doesn't know that um we have public meetings so that people who are interested in how we arrange the group how we organize the group are able to watch participate offer feedback so that's what this is it's it's a little different than a class but anyway thanks for being here thanks for uh letting us know you're leaving bye farmers goodbye good Okay. Uh, welcome back, Munmi. And I'm just taking, I, I'm substituting for Ahmed. And um, yeah, I'm just taking points for the agenda. 
anything you want to talk about related to teacher coordination? In absence of a teacher, uh, in absence of a member who is working with a uh, teacher coordinator coordination, who is going to work? And yeah. <laughs> I also would like to propose that the last 20 minutes of this call will be open for anyone who's participating here to join in the conversation. Like we used to do with the teacher meetings. And yeah, shall we start to discuss the agenda items? Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so I am bringing my agenda that um, I have seen uh, nearly wants to take break in December. And uh, I am also going for a long vacation in at least for 20 days in December, December and January, means 23rd December to uh, 10th of January. So I was just thinking, uh, so in absence of a member who is doing a particular job, um, how it is going to be executed, who is going to manage or... Do you have an answer yourself to that question, Muni? An idea? Uh, I think whoever thinks uh, can do the job can take the initiative and inform in the Discord or here. Because informing this is this is the reason that informing in advance. Yeah, I have a different idea. Let's all take a break together, rather than you two taking a break and uh, saying somebody want to take over for us. How about we just all take a break? <laughs> together, <laughs> let's take a break. Right away. Let's why wait for December? 
Christmas to New Year. Christmas to New Year is six days. Nellie is talking about a month and you're talking about 20 days, three weeks. So why don't we, so, I mean, there's still six weeks until November, uh, until December. That's a long ways away. Yeah, it's still How? even from me. I'll be well, on holidays. Yeah, I mean, and I'll be traveling and there'll be no laptop. So updating work I can do. I mean, uh, teach uh, about the schedule, which class happened or not happened or something new and that I can do, but other like uh, Google Calendar and all, I don't think, uh, I mean, I will be able to do without a laptop. Mm. And I'll be not here in another state, a new place. When? From 23rd uh, to 9th January. So by 10th, I'll be reaching home. Yeah, it's um, so when your your proposal was to to find someone else who wants to do the job in the absence, and they would say so that they do it, and then yeah, we know it, about it. And James is saying you're saying that we could just shut the whole group down for that uh, for December, for example. And I don't want to push anyone. So if he wants, anyone wants to do, so voluntarily, they can say, but I don't want to push. So. No, to, to be honest, I'm not going to make it to December. I'm not going, I don't have the energy to continue um, keeping my current level of engagement in the group. I don't have the energy to do that until December. I don't know if I have the energy to do it for tomorrow. It was, a, it was um, difficult for me to um, teach today. Now, the group does not have to close down just because I am not teaching or doing teacher coordination work, but I'm just letting you know that I am really, uh, I really want to take a break. And I haven't exactly worked out the details of when and how to do that but it's in the works for me Which again, gives the question how to proceed when one teacher who, or and board member who has done the majority of the work to, to provide meeting spaces for group members 
um, wants to take a break. What about adding some other members to the board? To help if, if you think it's necessary for keeping on the group work, like two other members. What do you think about adding new board members? I think it's good. I like to nominate Nargis and Siamak to the board of directors. Hmm. I think they are active members. They can help the group. But just nominating. Just what? Just, I mentioned their names and I want to know your ideas about them. We can decide together about uh, is it necessary to add some more ad, uh, members or not? Or what, what about them? Fatima, you uh, are proposing for adding new members who are active in the group. <coughs> and uh, I was also thinking, I have been thinking on of uh, saying the same uh, proposal. Um, in fact, I was thinking in the last week only. And then when we got no response from Ahmed, Strongly, I have a desire to add. Oh, I think we need some active members. Not, you know, if someone is adding to the board member, so the person should uh, feel the responsibility. We need such member. And not only just feel responsibility, but uh, skillful in relationship and making communication with the board. Good in yes. communication, actually. And uh, okay. yes, that they can help more than just doing their job without a connection to the group or to the board of directors. I, I mean, I, I think that Siemak and um, Nargis would be great board members. So I'm supportive yeah. of inviting them. Yeah, I also support Nargis. Yeah. Me too. Hmm. Which means that, I mean, we have one vacancy due to uh, Mohammed Ichbara leaving. We have two members on the board who are not responsive or have, um, we are struggling to work with them. They are not coming to the board meetings, Claudette and Ahmed. And Fatima, you had proposed to, to wait for a week before making a decision about um, Ahmed. Yes, I think maybe Ahmed is mm, hurt emotionally. Maybe he came back, so we give him, I, I believe it's good if we give him one week and waiting for the next upcoming board of directors meeting. And then if he doesn't want to attend, or he doesn't attend him, he doesn't speak in board channel, then you can add <coughs> other board members. <coughs> and Claudette, Claudette as well. Same thing for Claudette. Yeah. Yes, both yeah. of them, I think. <laughs> Anyone else? I, I'm supportive of that. I don't think that there's a need to um, 
rush <laughs> to saying that they are not board members. It's, it is, they have not been responsive in chat and um, especially Ahmed, I think you're right. I think it's okay to just uh, see how it turns out. Um, I know we've had six or seven board members, but um, I don't see a problem inviting both Nargis and Siamak immediately. We have time till December. <laughs> this is not about I really moon me. If if you're gonna if your timeline is December, it's gonna be very I feel it's very different than how I feel about um six weeks uh, is a long ways away. <laughs> no, I was just wanted to say that uh, till December when I I mean till my uh, taking uh, vacation. I'll be doing the work. So, and Fatima is already doing her work. So everyone, <laughs> I mean, things are going smoothly on me. That's what I'm saying. And uh, additionally, uh, they, if they come and join uh, in advance, that's good. Uh -huh. But if no one is dead and still the work will go on, that's what I'm saying. That's the question. What is the work? And is it running smoothly? <laughs> Seems like we have different opinions about that in the group. What do you mean? What are the different opinions? <laughs> um, well, it seemed to me that you were not sharing the opinion of Moonmi that all the work is covered and we don't need extra uh, people to help until uh, December. Um, I didn't mean to give that impression. That's not true. I okay. think um, I think we're okay. Um, What I mean is, I think it's okay if certain things don't get done. That's that's really what I mean. It's almost anything. I, I, that's how I feel. It's 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 okay if almost anything does not get done. And um, and then, if for some reason it's not okay that something doesn't get done then that's, that's, that's something we can work on. Um, <clears throat> I think it's fine if nobody is teaching. I think it's fine. Um, pretty much, you know, if, if we go into like... Um, What's the word? Hibernation. <laughs> yeah, that's ex great. Great. Hibernation. A, a kind of hiber hibernating state. Um, low activity. Just, you know, hibernate. You're not, you're not dead. If you're hibernating, you're not dead, even though there's low activity. Just like Ahmed is doing well, not just Ahmed, all, all of us can do okay. it. I really, I, I mean, the reason that I'm not confirming, for example, right? So this is a good example. Uh, mm -hmm. Nellie would like me to, conf in my role as head teacher, to confirm meetings. And... <coughs> 
<clears throat> I'm not sure if I want to do that in my role as head teacher. I'm not just trolling the group and being stubborn. I'm not really sure that I want to do that. And I'm basing that on my feeling that it's real. I can feel for some reason a very strong resistance to doing it. Now, I haven't yet gotten to the point of articulating it. And right. And so the problem is, it's not a problem, but right. If, if you want, if you just want me to do it and I don't want to do it and you just want me to give you an explanation and I don't have an explanation, then it may seem like there's a problem. But we could really look at, well, if it's a problem, what is the problem? And so um, I'm just following my gut on this to not force myself to do it when I'm not ready and to not even talk about it when I'm not sure what I want to say about it. And I think, I mean, other people, I, my impression is that other people have done something similar to that many, many times. Sometimes it's really frustrating for me. Sometimes I learn a lot when I when that happens. You know? Um, so I think it may be an opportunity for the group to learn something about work, the distribution of work, and the difference between doing work that we feel moved to do versus trying to <laughs> push other people to do work that we want to get done or we believe must get done. And um, I think, I think it could, I think it could be beneficial to learn about that. Just like yesterday when I was chairing or Friday, when I was chairing the board meeting, um, I was not trolling the group by being silent. It was the same thing. I really thought it didn't make sense for me to speak yet. Something something was going on in the group or or just inside of me. And I didn't want to rush it. But I did I did want to show up. I, I didn't want to just hide under a rock. But the things you wanted from me may be seemingly simple things like saying, yes, I'm going to chair. No, I'm not going to chair. This is the agenda. This is you know, all the things that you may come to expect. Um, I wasn't there. It didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. Um, I am definitely irritated towards Ahmed. See, Fatima talks about waiting to see what will happen with Ahmed, but I'm irritated towards him for now, what I would say is for a few months. And um, it's okay for me to be irritated. The group doesn't have to save me from being irritated, but the group has to, I think, face the fact that something is happening. Um, and actually it's very intertwined to this meeting, particularly the teacher coordination meeting is specifically the place where me and Ahmed have been having friction. For a month or more, Ahmed was trying to, I felt, push me to work. And I dug my heels in and I said, look, Ahmed, if you would like to do this work, please do it.
I did not choose this day and time for this meeting, right? It, it, it was a med's choice, right? We, I don't, I'm not, I don't wanna, um, I'm not bad mouthing Ahmed or anybody for changing their mind, changing what they're doing. I, I want to highlight, I wanna underline that taking responsibility for work, work happens at some, somewhere and at some time. And if it's with other people, right, the ability to show up in a way is essential. Now, for me, the journey, the learning is about really letting go, wanting other people to do something and then being okay if they don't do it. Right? I'm okay that Ahmed is not here. Um, I'm okay if there is no teacher coordination subcommittee. I'm okay if there's no other teachers working in the group. That's not, that's not what I want but I, I want it, the work to be manageable for me. And, and I have been moving for at least six weeks away from organizing teachers, right? I, there was a time where I was very active getting other teachers to come into the group, paying them, finding them, scheduling them. And then there was a time where I thought, oh, maybe other people will help me with that. Some people said they wanted to help. Well, I'm coming to terms with the fact that people sometimes say things but don't follow through. And I don't wanna blame them and uh, put it on them, but I'm just being realistic and saying, oh, I don't have the energy and other people don't either. And that's okay. We don't have, we don't have to have other teachers we're teaching in the group. I certainly haven't stopped teachers from teaching in the group. You have said a lot. Um, I wonder if you'd like to hear from others. From the team, from the subcommittee. So James, uh... You actually want uh, to let the things go off and uh, accept the fact and uh, to learn from the situation. How can we work? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. How can we work together with the spontaneous energy that exists in the group? Yes. I accept that. Mm. But sometimes it becomes unmanageable too, or, or maybe overload. I don't, I don't get any appropriate work for that. And again, the question comes: Then, if Ahmed does not respond, 
uh, how we're going to, who is going to do his job. I mean, if anyone <laughs> teacher wants to come, I have seen uh, maybe some of two, three teachers are writing there. <clears throat> <laughs> that sounds like you're in a different place, Moonmi. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just confused. If, uh, like last time, I was uh, trying to uh, connect with some teachers, <laughs> maybe he said that no, I mean, it is not, I mean, you want me to stop and wait for them. So I'm just. Yeah, confused. you were. I had made a proposal, how mm. we organize Doing our work. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And then everyone said, oh yeah, sounds good. <laughs> but then everyone did something else. So yeah, we can do something else. And it seems like James wants to do something else and makes more yeah. sense to him to do something else. And um, yeah, so don't feel limited by that proposal I made three weeks ago. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. I have felt I have actually had a lot of resistance to that proposal and um, nothing personal, but 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 since since you made it, my my feeling has been uh, I've been uh, resistant to that proposal. <clears throat> yes. I, I am glad that you made it. I think that making a proposal and finding out why I'm resistant to it could be useful, but um, uh, Moonmi, you just said that um, it's a problem if somebody doesn't respond, like who's going to take over their work? Yeah. Or is it fine if anyone, any any board member, just go and uh, I don't know do it just informing in this court board channel that I'm doing this first informing and then Well, here's the thing. This is how I have seen it. See, I always saw myself as like the head of the teacher coordination subcommittee. And somehow I feel like people do things against what I'm doing with coordinating teachers. And I don't want to I don't want to get in people's way. I really don't know how to manage it when I um It, it's it's like people have moving in a totally different direction. So I, when I see that, I step back and I watch. I, I say, okay, you're doing something else, and I'm, I, I don't see it going anywhere. So it's it feels to me like people are just we're we're just not on the same page about how to coordinate teachers. And Would I'm you like to give an example? Well, the example that comes to mind is Ahmed teaching, Ahmed wanting to teach. So Ahmed wanted to teach, he tried to schedule something 
um, but it didn't happen. And I'm trying to understand why it didn't happen. <clears throat> if the teacher coordination committee was on the same page, it seems like getting Emmett to teach would have been very simple, but it apparently was not simple at all. It, it was actually a big problem. So, something was, I'm not sure what. And now, um we're in a limbo place where Ahmed is not responding Ahmed is not in the uh in our meeting Ahmed left a bunch of groups okay we you know I have emotional uh outbursts myself where I do things and then I take them back so that's it's okay it's just well Where, where again, where is the spontaneous energy for working? I don't, I don't see any energy. I mean, other than being here, obviously being here is, is, is energy <clears throat> towards getting on the same page. Um, great. So you, uh, I'd like to, to summarize what I understand from you, James. Um, you see people um, in the teacher, uh, you, you perceive yourself as the person who leads the teacher coordination subcommittee. And then there's other people who have some energy to work, but they the work they are doing is a bit uh, mysterious to you. you. They do something and it doesn't go in the direction you want to, to as, lead. Yeah, as head teacher, in, in a role as head teacher, I do see the head teacher as just being, in making, you know, conceptually leading the, the teacher coordination. And yes, and then um, people who are describing themselves as doing teacher coordination, doing things that I, I just don't understand. So I feel I feel alienated from other people doing teacher coordination, wondering what's going on. Wondering where is the energy to coordinate? And towards what? To coordinate what? To coordinate who? Now, I, in my awareness, I, well, I, I don't want to add more. So, yeah. That's it, Nelly. I, I wonder if you also see some... Uh, or, okay, so... Um, we have the one person who who want who has an idea and creates this vision for how how teacher coordination could work, and then there's all the other people who have their own uh, spontaneous ideas how to join the work and, and do something, and it's going off in all directions. And um, the teacher is stepping back and and taking in the picture. And, yeah, and <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say no. I don't want to say no uh, unless it's clear, unless I have a clear reason to say no. But at the same time, I don't see a clear picture of what people are doing or what people want to do. Um, and that's also okay because I'm... <sighs> I'm not being obstructed.
And I'm sorry if something I'm doing is obstructing anyone else. It's not my intention. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think we, we really need to um, just name the things that sound uh, off to, to, to get an understanding and have meetings like this <coughs> today. Where, where we hear about what each of us, what makes sense to us <laughs> to do, uh, to come on the same page slowly about. And, and I think it's useful to name specific events that have happened like this uh, scheduling with Ahmed, um, where, where it's, uh, we, where the group, <laughs> the teacher coordination subcommittee failed in coordinating. <laughs> and yeah, so there was a teacher who wanted to teach a class and then <laughs> bureaucracy happened, <laughs> expectations and, and uh, something. And, and then the teacher lost their uh, interest to teacher. Uh, yeah, there gave up, thought maybe it had a mind read that everyone's hostile towards them and they, <laughs> it makes no sense to try to teach. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so that was a failure of the coordination, teacher coordination subcommittee. Um, and we have a, a, a lot of success stories as well <laughs> where it worked out that someone taught a class. So we could either look at the failures or we could look at the good things, the things that where a teacher was successfully teaching a class in the class, in the group. Um, so what, would you like to, to do that, to name further examples and, and see how it worked or didn't work? What was block? Hey, Ali, I'm muting you. But anyone in the group who listens can come in now. So, but it's a board meeting. We are discussing how to organize the teacher uh, coordination to, to make it possible that teachers can teach classes in this group. Uh, in regarding to Ahmad class, uh, I, I really expected him as a teacher, not only as a teacher, but as a um, teacher coordination member. He was aware of his class and he was silent. I have a mind read that he forgot his class and then suddenly remembered, oh, I had a class and then wrote in Discord. This is a mind read, but I can't understand if he was aware of his class, why he's not talking about it. As a uh, teacher coordinator, coordinator member. <coughs> so I think he just forgot it. And then uh, not at that time, he said he's not, he said that he, I didn't see my name in <coughs> Google Calendar. And then I think he forgot it. And when he remembered, it was late. Because well, been talking Fatima, yeah. so <laughs> you have an idea what's going on for Ahmed and I'd like you to, to um, you, we can't check it right now. So I think more, the more interesting thing would be how, what is going on for you? What, how would you like to, to handle such a situation mm -hmm. with that, such a teacher or teacher coordinator? Um, I, I'm, I'm not happy with such a member or teacher if he knows that uh, today I have a class and then be silent. And after some time, when time is 
gone now I remind that I had a class today why you don't remind me this is something that I, I don't expect from teacher or from a board of director or teacher coordination and I think it's just an example that happened may happen for others as well uh, but it's not the way that we are working here if I see that Ahmad is casual for his class I, I should remember remind it to the board that he is He's gonna teach. Mm. He's I think gonna teach we had today, like Fatima. This. Actually, I think we had the exact same situation <laughs> with Elena's first class. She was waiting for some her class to be on the schedule or a reminder that she has she will be teaching and and yeah she didn't show up for her first class. <laughs> she forgot, right? Hmm? Not like what uh, it, and it wasn't. It was. It was not it was not okay with Elena either. See, that's the thing because I scheduled Elena's class, and I I got it. I confirmed with her, and she didn't show up. And then I said, "Why didn't you show up?" She said she didn't know. See, but she didn't tell me why she didn't know. And there and the whole purpose of 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 having someone who does the scheduling is so that it's like a buddy system. Like <laughs> somebody knows, right now. I found it completely mysterious uh, with Elena because it happened like three days in a row. I scheduled the class late. Maybe she didn't come. Then I scheduled it again. She didn't know about it. And that was fine. But it was like the third time in a row. And she said, oh, yeah, I didn't know about it. And I said, that doesn't make any sense. This is the third time in three days we just did this. And you're telling me you didn't know. Now. I, I don't have anything against her. I like that she wants to teach in the class. I didn't punish her by saying you can never teach again, but it still didn't make any sense to me. Just like Ahmed's behavior did not make any sense. And the only way for it to make sense is to talk to the person. And if Ahmed was ever available for talking, we could figure it out. He's not, and so we don't know. And that's extremely frustrating. It is not just the responsibility of teacher coordination. Teacher, since teacher is interested, want to keep it te the teaching, he is or he or she is also responsible for you know, all the information. And uh, is I'm giving a date, then I'm aware of the date that I'm going to teach on this day. Yes. And I'm, I'm not getting any information, then I will, I will contact them. Yes. That is teacher's job also. Yeah, th that has happened in other cases too. For example, teachers who want to teach outside of our usual teaching time. And actually, there's some there's a teacher who used to do that, teach outside of our usual teaching time. And I, I was actually surprised because there were many people who came to the class anyway, and the teacher still was dissatisfied with how many people came. And I, I didn't, I kind of bit my tongue because I didn't want to get into an argument. But if you're going to teach outside of our usual times and you're not even satisfied with the amount of people who come, and I thought it was a lot, well, that's your job. Get more people to your class, right? Like that's the whole point of, you know, we, we, we offer a space to be a teacher, but yeah, you've got to, that's the whole point of whole, holding some of the space, holding some of the work of all of that that's involved in being a teacher and having a class, a successful class. I think we are colliding with some outside, outside this group norms of workplaces where people mm -hmm. are really given kind of like a, um, yeah, they work, just do their work and then the next thing is brought by a conveyor belt. <laughs> they no, don't decide I anything. <laughs> I'll tell you, no, actually we're better than even, there's a, there's a group called Hello English. They're a big group. Uh, somebody from WEP invited me there to be a teacher. There's hundreds of thousands of people in that group and a lot of teachers and you get paid. And I taught a few classes and no students came to my classes. And so I stopped. And they, the, the, the organization, Hello English, is like, please keep teaching. And I said, look, no, I get more students. You want me to, to work 
for for two dollars an hour and i have no students when when in my group i have 40 students no i'll go for the 40 students you can keep your two dollars and 50 cents thank you very much it just didn't make any sense so it's just not true that in other groups they're going to work like a conveyor belt and give you students we actually what I'm trying to say is, Nellie, we actually provide a lot that in a normal uh, work environment you, you might get, maybe sure. even more. I, I agree with that. And still, there are people like I think Ahmed, he's really expecting someone to give him very precise uh, instructions for what, uh, be there at this hour, <laughs> click on that button and and. Yeah, there's all kinds of jobs in the world. And teacher is a, a job where you need to be kind of self-employed. You, you need to have some entrepreneur um, skills and, and knowledge. No, see, actually, in real jobs, they don't put up with that bullshit. You cannot go to a real <laughs> job and ask to be micromanaged down to every little bit without ir irritating your supervisor and they won't work with you. You've got to be, you've got to have some level of self-startership in an actual job. And there's plenty of times where I gave Ahmed specific instructions and he just didn't do what I said. And so then he's on his own. See, I will, I will give very clear instructions. Now, you wanna tell me both, give me clear instructions, but don't give me the instructions that I don't want, then no. I told him a million times, do this, do that. Use use a, a, a Arabic Syrian translator. Summarize me, and he said no. Well, then he's on his own. You can't have it both ways and say, give me instructions, but only the instructions that I want. Which is so which is people just might not be suitable for the job. Yeah, able to to do it. Yet they have not reached the development level to organize themselves enough yet. I see, I think that that's a mind read of Ahmed. <laughs> Just because he's not doing what we want him to do doesn't mean he's not able to do it. We just left, see, we're just left with a mind read. We don't know. He didn't actually, as far as I know, he didn't say that. <clears throat> I mean, I, I could tell you some things I, I have heard from him, things that he has said, but I can't solve the whole puzzle. Yes, he said that we're focusing on little things that are not important. Okay. Now, I, could, I wanna ask him what is important, but I never get answers to my questions from him. So it's just a big black box. It's just a big unknown. We're all tempted. Fatima is tempted to fill in the, the, the blanks. You're tempted to fill in the blanks. And I'm tempted, <laughs> yeah. I'm tempted to fill in the blanks. But the, the reality is we really just don't know. Yeah. It's really frustrating. And what he thinks, the small things, that's not a small thing. <laughs> to be honest, I don't even know what small things he's talking about. So I can't even say if it's small or not. <laughs> It's, it feels a bit similar to the situation with Rosie, where <laughs> she's having all this beautiful energy to, to join work, but it's so hard to, to, um, to get to the points that are important to me, for example. <laughs> like, <Yes. laughs> or I think all of us maybe <laughs> to, to discuss that first before, like not speaking at the same time in the channel. <laughs> or taking in what the other person says, something like that. And, and it's, I don't want to shut down the, the energy that people who want to join the administration work have, but, well, but see, I'm doing it. <laughs> well, I don't know. See, I, I'm not sure. See, the energy that we get from Rosie is advice. And it's, it's I, for me, it's, it's kind of um, hidden as you do this. Not that Rosie wants to work, but that Rosie wants to tell us what to do. 
and it's doesn't it's not malicious she has ideas but any but if i ask for specifics if i ever ask for specifics about what she wants to do i either get no answer where i get excuses excuses or reasons that she's doing something else totally fine but it's not helpful because I didn't ask for advice from her about what to do or how to do outreach or how to make posters. So we're just not on the same page. And and that's people will come like that. People will come with advice. Um, if you've been in this. Yeah. Uh, I we are at the end of this meeting and I would like to, to chair a treasury meeting. For another hour. Mm -hmm. I need to leave. Yeah, I I need to leave too. I've been here for three hours and I'm I'm, also. Ex I'm exhausted. So yeah, nothing personal against Treasury, but it's not. It's just it, the the stars are not aligned for me right now. Mm -hmm. I don't have the physical or mental energy to give any more towards Treasury right now. Okay. I think it makes more sense to work in a dialogue than in a monologue <laughs> for me. So I'm canceling that meeting. That makes okay. sense to me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Nelly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Nelly. Thanks. Morning, Dan. Yeah. Have a great day and night. Bye. Have a good day. Bye bye. 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 Have a good time.